Hey everybody, this is Sky from Sky High Studios and today I'm going to walk you through my process of making a fursuit head. To start off, you want to take two measurements. The circumference of your head and a measurement from the top center of your head down the front of your face to your chin. These will be the dimensions of the rectangle of half inch foam we're going to start out with. I usually add around an inch or two to the length of the piece, otherwise the foam will warp a bit and make it a bit smaller than the circumference of your head. You want to find the center of the piece of foam and mark where your eyes, nose and mouth sit when you touch the bottom of the foam to your chin. Then you're going to want to mark out the shapes as seen here. Kind of looks a bit like Darth Vader. Once that's done, you're going to want to take a lycra balaclava and start to glue it on top of the shapes you cut up, lining up the eyes with the eye holes and the mouth roughly around where your mouth sits in the triangle piece. Your nose should fit at the top of the triangle. Next you want to glue the two short ends of the rectangle together at the back. I'm using a hat stand or a mannequin head to help me out and having one is highly recommended for this project. Gluing each side to the back of the balaclava first may help you out in holding the pieces together. The balaclava will basically form the lining of the fursuit head. There is generally a lot of waiting for glue to dry in this process, so I suggest running cartoons or Netflix in the background to give you something to look at whilst you wait. You can use pins to hold the foam together if you're having a hard time getting it to stay, but make sure to remember to remove them. Next we're going to glue the rest of the balaclava to the inside of the tube we have created. Make sure you wait for the glue to dry a bit before you move on to the next section of the balaclava, as it is stretchy and will pull off if it's not dry enough. You're also going to want to trim the excess fabric off the eye and mouth holes. Next we're going to want to close off the top. Apply a lot of glue to the top of the balaclava and press the front and back sides to the top of the head so they touch. Wait to dry completely or else you're going to have quite a bad time. Once that's dry, apply hot glue to one of the other sides of the head. Press the center of one of the other sides to the center of the head like so. You'll have two little tabs left on the side of the head. Repeat on the other side. Trim the excess foam and carefully hold the two raw edges together to seal them. I recommend using pins to hold them together, one on each side. Repeat with the other three tabs. You now have the base of your fursuit. Remember to remove those pins you added. Now you want to carve out the shape for the muzzle. Generally go for a similar shape as seen here if it's a canine. If you fold it in half and position it against the arch in the mouth hole, you can kind of guesstimate how it will look. Always cut a little too much than you need, because you can always cut it back later. I find the shorter the muzzle, the more chibi the character looks. Next you want to cut a little ridge in the center of the muzzle. This will make it look more angled instead of flat. Put a generous amount of glue and pop something heavy on top of it to keep it closed. I had to wait for my hot glue gun to heat up here, so I decided to trace out the shape of the eyes. Trace it onto paper first and then onto the head. You'll need this cut out piece later, so be sure to keep it. You can cut out the outlines in the head and trim the balaclava fabric back. Next glue the base of the muzzle inside the triangle of the mouth. I also added a small piece of foam inside the muzzle to smooth out the sharp angle inside the mouth. I also cut out the first shape for the base of the cheek. My camera kept cutting out after 12 minutes so sorry if things are missed. Next I cut out an oval to put on each side of the muzzle to flesh it out. I also added a little ridge to give the muzzle some curve and to make a place for the nose. Next I'm going to carve down the cheek piece a little. You want to make the part where the foam splits fairly thin. This is what connect to the jaws and create the smile. Next I carved a piece to go on top of this jaw piece to flush it out. The more cheek you add, the more chubby your character will seem. I spent a bit of time smoothing out the muzzle and the shapes I had just added. You need to make it fairly smooth, but fur does hide some of the bumps.
just a little more foam on top of that muzzle to make it chubbier and smooth it out. Next, I carved out a nose and the shape of the jaw, then glued the nose on. Sorry for the jump, camera cut out again. I rounded out the bottom of the lower jaw and fitted it on the head, then carved out the inside of the jaw to make the inside of the mouth. You may want to mark this out beforehand to avoid cutting off too much. Once you're satisfied with how it looks and have removed all the sharp edges, glue it on your head, at the base of the triangle. If you have the jaw further forward, it'll look more masculine, further back, feminine. I tried to find a happy medium as this suit was a pre-made. Next, I carved out the other side of the cheek, then I glued the top piece onto the bottom cheek for both sides. Whilst that's drying, I've carved out a brow piece. It kind of looks like a bendy T that touches the muzzle, outlines the eyes, and touches the tops of the cheeks. It may take a while to get the shape right, but keep at it till you're happy. Then I carved the cheeks, as smooth as I could and started to glue them onto the head. I recommend using an almost excessive amount of glue as these are the most difficult pieces to get to stay. I decided to cut a bit off the cheeks as they weren't very flexible and were making the head squish a bit. The key to fursuit making is taking your time and making sure you're happy with it. I see suits where the foam hasn't been carved smooth and get rather frustrated because it probably would have taken them all of half an hour to fix. Next, I glue on the brow piece. Of course, you can alter this pattern to create your own style and or to fit your own character. Doing some more carving down of the cheeks. Occasionally you'll see me add little bits of foam here and there to fill in gaps, and that's completely fine. You can add as much as you like to fix holes. Next I carve the eyebrows and glue those on top of the brow piece. I wasn't happy with how the jaw was sitting, so I tore it out and re-glued it. Don't be afraid to do this if you change your mind.
Next, you want to add a piece of foam to smooth out the angle that the muzzle makes with the head. Next, I decided to trace out the shapes for the ears. You can try many different styles, but keep going till you find something you're happy with. Cut it out of foam and position on the head with pins till you're happy. Then glue them down. I then trim all the sharp angles off the ears to make them a little smoother and remove all the pins. This character has horns, so I simply carve them out of foam and secure them onto the head with a lot of glue to secure them. I am using a Leatherman multi-tool knife to carve out a lot of my foam, but lots of people use bread cutters or scissors. Here I'm using the ref to get the rough idea of how the horns should be shaped. Next we're going to make the eyes. Take that tracing you made and trace where you want the pupils to go, then trace and cut out that shape out of foamies. I generally like to glue a bit of cardboard on the back to reinforce it, but you can use plastic or something along those lines. Next you want to grab some buckram fabric and mix and paint the colour of your eyes. Take the outline and use it to guesstimate the size of the black part of your eye and paint the coloured part on. You can also add a little white dot or a star or even a heart to add a little bit of sparkle. Then use an excessive amount of glue to attach to the back of the eye cutout so the coloured part is in the hole of the eye. Disco, disco, disco. 
Next, cut out the strip of white foamies about half an inch thick and start to wrap that around the eye, applying a little bit of glue to the edges of the cutout to secure it. Apply the same principles when you get back to the start and repeat with the other eye. Next, trace the outline of the eye on some black foamies. Then trace an outline about half a centimetre smaller than what you originally traced and half a centimetre bigger. Cut this out, and this will be used to outline the eye later and increase the follow me effect. Don't lose them like I almost did. Next, I glued the eyes into the head. Place a fair amount of glue around where the eyes will go and push into place, positioning them until satisfied. Then use more hot glue as a cement to fill in gaps. You can spend as much time fixing the foam work as you like. Cut out a bit of the back of the head to help with movement when the wearer looks up. Once you're happy with your foam work, cover the whole thing in several layers of tape. You want this to be sturdy. Mark out where your markings will go. Then split the head into sections. You want to make sure these will be able to lie flat as these will form your pattern pieces for the head. I also go and number these to keep track. Congratulations, you now have a fully ready to fur head base. Once that's done, start to cut out all your pattern pieces and cutting into the pieces so they lay flat. I popped mine in an old school book to remove the stickiness. I also trace the pattern pieces on the head after I cut them out so I can remember where they go and how they fit. Cut them out from the paper and then start to trace it on the fur, being careful to note the fur direction that the piece is supposed to have relative to the head.
then cut them out. I've sped up this part a lot and have taken out a lot because it's rather repetitive. I strongly recommend investing in, or having on hand, a mini vac. This will greatly reduce the amount of fur that will inevitably end up on you, your furniture, in your lungs, on your pets, prized possessions, ceiling fans and loved ones. Trust me on this and use a vacuum. Next, you want to sew everything back together. There's not much else to this besides the suggestion of shaving your pieces down before you sew them, then shaving them again once they're on the head. Although, I was using the wrong clipper blades for this. You should use a 7FC blade. I was using a 10 for this head. I'm using a blanket stitch to sew all this together, but you can use a back stitch or any other stitch that will do the trick. You can place the fur pieces on your head to view your progress as you go. Try to sew as much together as you can before gluing it on the head. I know I skipped the footage of furring the horns, but it's 100% the same process. The reason why I didn't include it is because I didn't cut enough pieces of the pattern so it didn't cover the horns properly, so I spent a while remaking the pattern, etc, etc. Right, whilst this is happening, I'm going to give you some quick tips. I recommend buying at least 100 sticks of glue for an entire head. Never ever rush a suit. The end result will be never as good as it could have been. Never use toy fur. Not only does it shed and the fabric warps, but generally it looks bad. I suggest using luxury shag. I get mine from fabric.com or distinctive fabrics, but you could also use fox fur or seal fur or something along those lines. I am using upholstery foam. I get mine from Clark Rubber here in Australia, but I believe Walmart sells rolls of the stuff. I'm not 100% sure on that though.
I line the inside of the mouth with some more lycra fabric. You can use whatever you like. I also do this to the nose. It makes it squishy and leathery, but I don't recommend you do this. Order a nose from Drew Vision Creations or something. Here, the first thing I glue on is the lower jaw. I hide any exposed seams by applying a small amount of glue to the very edge of the fabric and pushing the backing on top of itself to create an edge which has fur on it instead of fabric. Apply this to the area around the nose, in the inside of the mouth, and wherever you didn't sew together. Then start from the nose and work your way back, smoothing out the fabric once you apply the glue to remove any lumps. Keep going until you've fully furred the head. Now we start the shave. Take your time with this. It's rather easy to mess up. I wasn't 100% happy with the shave on this suit, but I think it'll be a lot easier now that I'm changing blade sizes. Shave the entire front half of the face as evenly as you can get it, then go back with scissors or a razor to fix up messy parts if needed. Next I glued on the outline around the eyes, making sure to attach the black to the white parts of the eyes without any fur cord. Then I go and sew up any seams left unattached to the ones next to it. This also helps hide your seams. Next, the tongue. I mark it out on the non-side of some fluffy, pink, minky fabric. Then double the fabric over with both fluffy sides touching and sew the shape of the tongue. Turn it inside out and sew a line down the center, then pop a little bit of stuffing inside to give it some volume. Sew the open side closed and then glue in the head. Now the neck. You wanna cut out something that is roughly in the shape of a diaper, kind of a bad image I know, but it's basically the triangle you have on the front and back of the neck and two little strips on either side to leave room for the shoulders. Cut out two of these, cut it out from the fabric, and sew it onto the head. Right, the only thing left to do now is fix any tiny mistakes on the head, such as reinforcing seams, looking for holes, neatening shaving and brushing it all out. So yeah, I think that's about it. Feel free to comment down below with any questions or any suits you've made with my tutorial, and subscribe for more time lapses and fashion shenanigans. Thanks for watching everyone.